Welcome to Chanel Arasta. In this video, I'll summarize the plot of the Dong Hua Wu Dong Qian Kun series, which is about a normal kid who becomes a martial arts genius. Without wasting time, straight to the story. In the first scene, a white fox runs away from troops who are after the heirloom stone he is carrying. But since it was surrounded, the fox decided to blow himself up. The scene switches to a house where a man named Lin Xiao is drinking. This is because six years ago he failed to beat fighters from other clans in an inter-clan tournament, which made him depressed for years. His young son, Lin Dong, ran out while remembering his father's past six years ago. At that time, his father competed in the final of the tournament against Lin Langtian, a fighter who was known to be very strong from his clan. But his father, who carried high hopes, unfortunately could be defeated with just one strike. Not only that, Lin Langtian also took in the aura that belonged to Lin Dong's father. Long story short, several years had passed, and Lin Dong had now grown into a teenager. One day, he got into a fight with his cousin, Lin Shan, and his friends, which made him fall into the abyss. Himself, who was lying limp by chance, his blood dripping on an heirloom stone left by the fox at the beginning of the film, making the stone shatter, and he fell. In the darkness of the place, the stone shines a golden light that wakes him up. But when he woke up, he was surprised by the glowing marks that had appeared on his palms and the wounds that had healed. When he got home, his sister, Ching Tan, came to ask him to play because he couldn't sleep. After playing, he also left right away. While Lin Dong was drifting off to sleep, something strange happened again. He dreamed that he was in a dark blue dimension with many bamboo trees. When he was still confused, he was attacked by a mysterious person who was about the same size as him. The fight was unavoidable, which showed that their strengths were perfectly balanced. When he woke up in the morning, he was startled by the sound of his sister screaming from outside. It turns out that Lin Shan's group came and bothered Ching Tan so they could take the medicinal grass he was carrying. Lin Dong rushed over and tried to protect his little sister from those bad kids. <laughs> it was shown that Lin Dong's ability to block all of Lin Shan's attacks had greatly improved. Until he finally realized that he had used a secret technique called the Seven Sound Fist. Fortunately, as the altercation became more serious, Lin Shan's older brother, Lin Hong, intervened to break it up. Before leaving, he informed them that soon a tournament would be held in their clan to determine the strongest fighter in the Lin clan. The very confident Lin Hong said that after winning, he would marry Qin Ten later. When he returned, his father showed Lin Dong good and correct sound boxing techniques. He also promised to train Lin Dong to use various other techniques to prepare himself for the tournament. At night, Lin Dong saw Ching Tan, who was shivering from the cold because his aura was out of control. Surprisingly, the light mark on Lin Dong's hand swallowed the aura from his younger sister and turned it into three pearls. Because of that, Ching Tan's condition began to get better. As a gift, he gave the pearl to his sister on the condition that no one, including his parents, knew about what had happened. The next day, Lin Dong went back to his training and was able to increase his body's resistance. Aside from that, he can now enter the fox dimension on purpose, and he uses that place as a training ground. His shadow, which was attacking him, can now be used as a training partner in his fight training. Long story short, tournament day has arrived. In the first round, Lin Hong fought against his own younger brother, Lin Shan. In terms of strength, speed, and fighting experience, clearly, he and his brother are superior. 
In the second round, Qin Tan moved on as the next challenger because he did not want to marry Lin Hong. But Lin Hong showed his skills again, which were indeed on a different level. It wasn't long after that Lin Dong finally came and stepped forward as the final challenger. In that battle, everyone was shocked to see Lin Dong's increase in combat power, plus he was able to use the seven sound fist technique. Not to mention the increase in durability that reaches a high level and can withstand all the pressure given by Lin Hong. Not only was he able to parry all of his opponent's attacks, but Lin Dong, who was able to practice his training in another dimension, could launch attacks that accurately overwhelm Lin Hong greatly. And finally Lin Dong, who prevailed and was named the most formidable fighter of his generation. Lin Xiao之子, Lin Dong. After the tournament ended, Lin Dong's grandfather, who was the head of the Lin clan, explained to his two sons that the two neighboring clans, namely the Lei clan and the Xin clan, would join through the marriage of their children. This then made the two clans into an alliance. Then he also told about the next inter-clan tournament, namely the hunt for rare animals, which are still a secret. The conversation was closed with the clan head ordering their child to train even harder to prepare for the next tournament. In the meantime, the head of the Lei clan was also getting his son, Lei Li, ready to take part in the tournament between the clans. Lei Li's father was very proud of how strong his son was because he had learned the high-level body resistance needed to beat fighters from the Lin clan. Long story short, an inter-clan tournament was held. Here, Lin Dong's father told his son that the competition this time was a hunt for rare animals, and Lin Dong was required to subdue a rare animal namely the flame tiger, which was famous for being very ferocious. But the rules didn't require catching it because Lin Dong only needed to pick up the scales at the end of the animal's tail in order to finish the match this time. It was shown that all the participants had gathered, including the son of the host named Wu Yun. In the beginning, there was already tension between the participants because Lei Li was too arrogant. In short, the rules were told to them, they had to get the flame tiger scales to win, and they were not allowed to try to kill each other. When Lin Dong and his sister tried to find the flame tiger, it turned out that Lei Li and his team managed to find it first. But they seemed to have difficulty conquering these beasts. Lin Dong, on the other hand, was watching them from afar and waiting for the right moment to act. Until Wu Yun's team came from behind and offered to work together. Wu Yun who was going to attack the fire tiger, just waited for the beast to get tired from fighting Lei Li's team. He thought it would be good for Lin Dong, so he agreed with Wu Yun's plan and was ready to work together. After waiting for the right time, they all attacked Lei Li's team. Lin Dong told Wu Yun to focus on the flame tiger, since he was the one who had to fight Lei Li. In short, Wu Yun was able to cut the flame tiger scales thanks to good teamwork, and he left the battlefield as soon as he did. Unfortunately, Wu Yun, who was too happy, let his guard down and fell into the trap that Lei Li had set to catch the flame tiger. When Lin Dong caught up, it was too late because Lei Li had already taken his tiger scales and kicked Wu Yun into the flame tiger's lair. Lin Dong, who had the soul of a faithful friend, ignored the tiger's scales and went straight to Wu Yun to try to save him. Whereas Lei Li and his team came back and proudly showed off the fire tiger scales they had gotten. He also said that Wu Yun and Lin Dong might not come back because they might have died when they carelessly fell into the flame tiger's lair. But despite the tension, Lin Dong and Wu Yun made it back home safely. But Lei Li still thinks that he is the winner because he has the scales of the flame tiger. Here. Everyone was surprised to see Lin Dong and Wu Yun, who had actually brought two flame tiger cubs. Then Lin Dong told about the real thing that happened with Lei Li, who had broken the rules by trying to kill him. But when they went into the flame tiger's den, they found two flame tiger cubs alone because their mother had died after their scales were taken off. They finally agreed to bring the two animals because they felt sorry. It's now clear that these three did a good job of finishing this match.
Still, there will only be one winner, and they will have to fight to see who is the strongest and deserves the title of King of Hunters. But the head of the Lei clan really wanted a very rare baby flame tiger. He also suggests that they bet on their children's fight. The deal was that if Chairman Lei won, Lin Dong's baby tiger would be his. If he lost, he was willing to give up his clan's lumber mill. Everyone was surprised when he said this, because the wood factory was a very valuable asset of the Lei clan, and he was willing to bet on the baby tiger. There was some worry because Chairman Lei's confidence was not without reason. His son was known for having above-average skills for a child, but Lin Dong didn't care and was ready to take on the challenge. In short, their battle began. At the beginning, Lei Li was proud to show that he had reached the earthly Yuan level of strength. But Lin Dong also showed the same level as Lei Li, which made everyone completely shocked. It turns out that yesterday, before Lin Dong went to the tournament, his father gave him a Yin Pearl, which is a kind of aura-boosting pill. <laughs> As shown in the fight, they also attack each other and fend each other off. Perhaps because he was still getting used to his newfound strength, Lin Dong still seemed to have difficulty adjusting his attack patterns. However, he gradually managed to control it better and better to be able to keep up with Lei Li. Until finally, Lei Li increased his speed. Only then did Lin Dong look back, overwhelmed. With a significant increase in strength, as well as the lightning secret technique of his clan belonging to the top tier, Lei Li continued to carry out attacks that left Lin Dong only able to defend himself. Lin Dong, who still didn't give up, tried to align his arms to block an attack which seemed to be quite effective. While Lei Li, who was too annoyed, intended to end the fight with a deadly, super strong attack technique. He even had time to get a warning that this was not a battle of life and death. Sensing that Lei Li would not stop his attack, Lin Dong immediately cast several hand seals to release a technique called the Magic Gate to counteract the deadly attack. And sure enough, Lin Dong's technique, which he had trained to level two, not only blocked Lei Li's powerful attack, but it was also strong enough to knock him down and make him unable to get back up. When his son lost, the head of the Lei clan was angry and felt like he had no choice but to keep his promise to hand over his timber factory. The next day, it was shown that Lin Dong and his younger brother were playing with the flame tiger, which they named Lin Yen. Then in the afternoon they checked the timber mine they had won. But it looks like the place is completely falling apart. While searching for clues as to who did this, Lin Yen accidentally brought Lin Dong to a cave where there was a lot of hot lava and a giant monster skeleton. Inside the cave, Lin Yen found a blue crystal, which he voraciously ate. <laughs> Lin Dong, who was still curious, found a flower that gave off light. But when he got close to Lin Dong's hand, it was as if he had absorbed some kind of energy from the flower petals, which made his whole body burn. As his condition got worse, the flower petals' heat energy was absorbed by the fox stone in he hand. After making it out and meeting up with his family, Lin Dong told him about the cave he had just found and the red gemstone he had gotten inside there. Then they rushed to the location and everyone there was shocked because it turned out that the place was a very valuable gem mine. When they got home, they saw that Lin Dong had three gems. With the power of the fox stone, he can combine the three stones into one jewel with more value. Meanwhile, when the head of the Lei clan heard that a gem mine had been found, he was clearly even more upset. But after hearing the plan from his assistant, his face lit up again. Another time when the Lin clan was out shopping for different kinds of clan needs. Lin Dong went to an antique shop in the city center to look around. There was an old man named Yandesi who could see Lin Dong's unusual aura. After Lin Dong bought a bag, the fox stone in his hand suddenly responded to a force coming from the wood chips in the shop. The seller said that the item was completely worthless, and that he didn't know what it was used for either. But when Lin Dong was about to buy it, he found out that the girl named Ziyu had already bought it. Lin Dong would not budge, so he insisted on buying it anyway. In response to this, 
the two bodyguards from Ziyu rushed forward and pointed their swords at Lin Dong. But suddenly, the two swords were thrown, which turned out to be the work of Yandashi's grandfather, who had the power of telekinesis. It's revealed that Yandashi's grandfather is actually Ziyu's teacher. Their fight ended when Ziyu gave up and left the place. While Grandpa Yandashi told Lin Dong that his telekinetic ability was a mental power that was different from ordinary martial arts. He then offered Lin Dong the chance to become his disciple after he saw how much potential he had. But Lin Dong turned down the offer because he was afraid that the secret of the power of the fox stone in his hands might be revealed. Yandashi's grandfather wasn't in the least bit pushy and respected Lin Dong's decision. But before leaving, he gave him a book so he could study it. Meanwhile, in the mine area, a group of people from the Black Dragon village wanted to carry out an invasion. They intend to forcibly seize the timber factory because the ownership status of the mine is now considered unclear. But actually, these people were there on the orders of the head of the Lei clan, whom he deliberately ordered to take his place. Luckily, Lin Dong came back in time to try to fight, so a fight broke out. The boss of the Black Dragon instantly struck Lin Dong, sending him crashing into the door. With the aura shroud protecting him, Lin Dong was still able to endure and revive. While Qin Tan helped out by shooting a few arrows to stop these people from going any further. When the Black Dragon Chief saw Lin Dong's potential, he immediately strengthened his aura to kill him. He was afraid that Lin Dong would become a troublesome opponent if he wasn't stopped. While Lin Dong was hit with many deadly attacks, but he was still able to stay alive. In addition, it can be seen that he upgraded the magic gate to level 3, which is strong enough to match the strength of his opponent. When Lin Dong ran out of energy, he was able to get more by absorbing natural energy. He also told Qin Tan and Lin Yan to buy some time, at least until the energy was full. It was clear this would not be easy at all, especially since they were outnumbered. Until one of the enemies managed to stab Lin Dong in the stomach, Lin Dong got up right away, and his wounds healed very quickly because he had more than enough energy. And sure enough, after getting up, Lin Dong's strength has grown so much that in the second round he can beat his opponent with just one punch. When the leader of the Lei clan heard that his subordinates had lost, he was very shocked. What's more, the one who defeated him was only the lone Lin Dong. At night, Lin Dong was seen meditating and using his astral projection to practice his spiritual abilities. Inspired by Yandashi's grandfather, whom he just met a while ago, he also tries to practice telekinesis techniques by moving small objects in that place. Aside from that, he was curious about the piece of wood he had bought this afternoon, and realized that it had some kind of energy around it. He also tried to concentrate, but his energy was still not strong enough to penetrate it. Moments later, he felt a very strong energy beam and moved over to check it out using his astral projection technique. It turned out that the energy came from his grandfather, who had been able to reach the early Yuan Dan level. He immediately returned to his original body to meet his grandfather so he could congratulate him. But the grandfather explained that this was only the new Yuan Dan level at the first level. There are still a few more levels to go before reaching the highest level. Then he said that earlier he had felt the mental power of the coming astral projection technique. Even though it disappeared for a moment, he didn't know that the power belonged to Lin Dong. The topic changed. Lin Dong's uncle said that earlier, the Lei clan had asked him to meet with the Lin clan to talk about a business partnership. In short, after enough talking, they agreed to accept the invitation. The next day, they came to the main house of the Lei clan but only clan elders are allowed to get in. While waiting, Lin Dong sensed that there was an extremely strong mental force around him who was using his astral technique to scout around. While in the room, 
the clan elders were discussing the invitation to cooperate in building a business for mutual benefit with a profit-sharing system. However, the Lin clan objected because, according to the agreement, the head of the Lei clan would be the leader, while his clan would only be his subordinates. Here the cunning plan of the head of the Lei clan was uncovered, who actually wanted to become the ruler of the city where they were. The debate became so heated that they got into a fight. In the middle of their battle, Gu Ying, the leader of the Blood Wolf sect, suddenly appeared. Sided with the head of the Lei clan. Because it has been promised that he will be given a profit of 60% of the business you want to run. It is said that Gu Ying mastered a high level of mental strength. And sure enough, one by one, they can be taken down very easily. <laughs> Lin Dong didn't stay quiet, he tried to protect his clan members by fighting Gu Ying alone. Everyone was shocked to learn that Lin Dong had also mastered mental techniques to a fairly high level. Then they fought very fiercely. Even though Lin Dong was a beginner, it looked like he was able to keep up with Gu Ying's speed. <laughs> Until they used astral techniques against each other in aerial duels. But unfortunately, Gu Ying still had the upper hand and was able to stop Lin Dong. Back to real world war Lin Dong tried to launch his attack using some needle energy. But could be easily parried, which showed the difference in power between them. Now, at the peak of the battle, Lin Dong could only stay alive, which seemed to be getting more and more desperate. But when he was about to lose, Lin Dong remembered the piece of wood that had a very high level of mental energy. Then he tried to use it to withstand Gu Ying's mental attack. Surpassed expectations, it turned out to be really effective. It was powerful enough to counteract high levels of mental energy. Even though it could resist the wood, it was also able to absorb attacks from the spiritual energy, which were then transferred to Lin Dong's body. With this, Lin Dong was able to make things better. Gu Ying, whose strength had been completely drained, was no longer able to withstand the attacks from Lin Dong, whose number had increased many times over, so he had to accept his death. So ends part one of the story of Dong Hua Wu Dong Qian Kun. Okay, thanks so much for watching my whole video. If you like this video, please click the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe so that this channel can grow. See you next my video, bye.